Okay, so uh, good morning. My name is Mr. Daryl Del Mundo, and I will be the one who will talk about how to make an ISIM. So this is just an introduction to interactive strategic instructional or intervention material. So uh, let us first know what are the things that we need to be able to make an ISIM. So you can use the following. You can use the animations, you can use actions, and you can use applications, which includes the visual basic application in the PowerPoint. So ISIM simply means that this is a learning material made only in PowerPoint presentation, an upgrade of SIM, or ordinary PowerPoint lecture type, includes students' response and interaction, can be accessed offline too, and enjoyable and fun to learn. But first, let us uh, differentiate SIM to ISIM. So we know that SIM, they are printable, for consumption of papers and ink, requires book mind, and can be manipulated by hands, while ISIM can be stored in flash drive or your thumb drive, paperless learning material, more on games run by animations and uh, applications and uh, actions and then can be manipulated by mouse. If you have your Bluetooth mouse, that's a very good, okay? So what, what are the pros and the cons in iSIM? So the pros, let us uh, deal with the pros. Number one, it is digitally, digitally stored and paperless, ICT integrated, interactive, user-friendly. So since our uh, students are digital natives, they are able to manipulate or some uh, like explore the usage and functions of the computer. And uh, the cons are we have PowerPoint literacy and familiarization because not all of them are familiarized or literate when it comes to PowerPoint or in the Microsoft offices. Okay, and then availability of Microsoft PowerPoint presentations because some of them doesn't have, but thankfully, uh, so that Ed, the given us the free access to Microsoft Office 365. And then uh, coding in VBA, uh, this is the technical part or the IT part of the PowerPoint. When you're going to uh, use the Visual Basic application, it's a lot of words, a lot of letters, a lot of symbols, and uh, a lot of numbers. Then developer icons configurations. There are a lot of icons that you can see in the developer tab. So those are the cons that uh, we need to uh, be familiarized with. And laptops memory storage. So you need a large memory storage because when you put all the codes there, all the necessary I, like actions and applications and uh, other stuff inside your iSIM, oh no, it needs a big and a massive memory storage. Okay, so let us first tackle about animation. So you are already familiar with the animation pane or the animation part in the PowerPoint presentation, you can see there. In your animation, there's a lot of entrance, emphasis, it's one entrance, emphasis, and then exit or motion pads. So there are different uh, types of animation. So you can make use of it to make your PowerPoint very interactive. So make a combination of different animations to create a game in an interesting way. So not just one, you can do combination as well. For example, you can make quiz or something like revealing box and shooting game. So that's uh, one, uh, one of the best things that you can do in animations. You can combine them to make a gamified PowerPoint presentation. And next we have the actions or it is included with a hyperlink. So when you go to your developer tab, you can see their insert. So when you click insert, you will see there the hyperlink and then the box that has the star inside, okay? That is the action button. So the action gives, or does give the selected object an action to carry out when you click it or mouse over it. Later on, I will show you what is an example of an uh, action icon. So link and hyperlink, we know that connecting from one slide to another or to some videos or to some pictures or to some links, okay? And actions can also run the macro in the developer tab. So uh, 
in actions when you click it you can see there the macro and uh, when you uh, choose the macro you can like uh control and configure the drag and drag yeah yung drag and drop configurations you can use it the macro and uh, make use of it in the action icon now let's go to the application or the visual basic application so what is vba okay so vba or visual basic applications runs as an internal programming language in microsoft office or like in Access, Excel, PowerPoint, Publisher, Word, and Visual. But uh, we are going to uh, focus on uh, PowerPoint. Then VBA allows users to customize beyond what is normally available with MS Office host applications. VBA is not a standalone program. By manipulating graphical user interface or the GUI features such as toolbars and menus, dialog boxes, and forms, you may use VBA to create user-defined functions or the UDFs, access windows, application programming interfaces or APIs, and automate specific computer processes and calculations. So uh, to uh, simplify, VBA are the different uh, codes where we can put our codes, where we can put our macros so that when we run it, when we show it to the PowerPoint, all the things that we put inside okay, will be run to our output so you can see there when you put there like uh, drag and drop when you present it it will become drag and drop something like that and then when you command it for example you got it right you are wrong try again next time something like that so it is included in visual basic application so let's start with macro in visual basic application macro is essentially a sequence of characters whose input results in another sequence of characters, its output, that accomplishes specific computing tasks. You do not need to purchase the VBA software because VBA is the version of Visual Basic that ships with Microsoft Office 2010. So uh, uh, it is included also in your uh, PowerPoint, but some of it are not activated yet. So I will teach you how to activate your developer tab so that you can see the macro and uh, the visual basic applications that uh, what am I uh, talking about. Okay, so we need to familiarize first with your PowerPoint presentation window. So at the top of it, here, you can see there the title bar. Okay, so that you will know what is the title of your PowerPoint. And then we have here the quick access toolbar and then we have the toolbar here, the next layer. And then on your right side, facing your uh, laptop or your computer is the slide pane or slides pane. And then on your right side, you can see there, this big part is the slide, okay? And then at the bottom of it is the status bar. So uh, you will see the developer tab here somewhere in the toolbar. But here in our example, we do not have the developer tab because it is not yet activated. Okay, so I will teach you how to activate your developer tab. So to set up your developer tab, so uh, kindly follow the different steps here. So let's get started. So to set up the developer tab, step one, go to the file tab and click. So you can see there the file tab. This is the file tab, okay? When you click the file tab, you will see another window will open and look for the options button. Options button is located at the bottom. When you click the options button, step three, choose customize ribbon. Another window will pop up. Choose customize ribbon, then click the developer tab box. So on your right side, here you can see the developer tab check so you need to check it okay and then do not forget to click okay then step four go back to the powerpoint window and then check the developer tab here is the developer tab okay besides proxy pdf and help button this is the developer tab and when you click the developer tab button these are all the icons that you will see very unfamiliar, right? So the purpose of this is later on, I will uh, 
teach you what are those icons for okay? what are the functions of those icons for us to be able to make our powerpoint become uh, like interactive and uh, enjoyable to uh, learn so to set up again to summarize it number one go to the file button then select options number two find the customized ribbon then three click the developer checkbox and then uh, number four check the powerpoint window and look for the developer tab in the toolbar and then explore and enjoy your developer tab okay did you get it okay i know all of you are uh, very uh, intelligent enough for you to know all about these things and uh, now the developer tab is the place to go when you want to do or use the following so this is basically the function of the developer tab okay are you ready to know okay number one to write macros this is very important and macros that you previously recorded use xml commands use active x controls create applications to use with microsoft office programs use form controls in microsoft excel work with the shape sheet in microsoft visual and create new shapes in stencils in microsoft visual so we are not dealing about those stuff we are going to uh, deal about macros and uh, to run the macros and even uh, the codes okay in the developer tab so these are the things that you uh, will see in the developer tab so we have the controls the codes the add-ins and the modify so uh, teachers we need to uh, open up our mind when it comes to those icons because we are in the midst of the pandemic and we need to you know level up our skills when it comes to ICT integration in teaching science or whatever subject it is so uh, these are very important for you to be familiarized with so let's start okay so the controls so this is very very important when it comes to uh, the developer time the control so basically this is where are we going to uh, focus all the inputs okay what are we going to input to our powerpoint so these are the actions or the icons rather icons and functions so as you can see when we click the developer tab a while ago you will see a lot of icons there and this is the control group okay when you see this one this is what we call label okay it gives you a label button so meaning to say if you use it you can make a label out of it so it's like a box and then you put some label on it okay and then next we have the text box this is what the text box looks like okay it allows you to type text inside the box so even though your powerpoint presentation is already presented okay kahit naka project na yan, you can uh, type okay you can type whatever text you wanted to type there okay it's like all it's like a black box like that rectangular box and then when you uh, put your cursor there and then click it you can type it okay that is the text box and then the next one we have the spin button so the spin button is like an up and down button we have this control allows the user to select a value by clicking on the two buttons either to increase or decrease the value so i uh use this one only for one so uh, when like addition something like that and subtraction you can add and subtract the value okay that's when you use it the speed button and then we have the next one this rectangular icon this is the command button okay it commands everything so when you put that rectangular button it commands everything like uh, you can add you can subtract you can multiply it's like uh, it is the connection between that uh, between uh, from one uh, action to another action okay it provides a command button okay if you want to check it it will check okay if you want to review it it will uh, be reviewed okay so that is the command button and then we have the image this is what the image looks like it allows you to insert images okay uh, it is allow you are allowed rather to insert images also in uh, the developer tab while using your visual basic application and then this one the scroll bar so 
most likely they are the same with the uh, spin button, scroll bar. So here in the scroll bar, it gives a scroll up and down command buttons, like uh, when you have the list, something like that. Okay, you can scroll up and you can scroll down and then choose. Okay, it's like a checklist, something like that. And then we have a checkbox. A checkbox looks like this, but when you put it in your PowerPoint, it's empty. Okay, so that the student, if uh, they click it, and then you can put some codes there when they check it or when they click it and then uh, put the check inside the box, it, it can uh, like gives you a prompt like you are correct or you are wrong or try again next time, something like that. It allows you to click the check inside the box. Okay. And the option button. So it allows you to click and choose. For example, you have the multiple choices, something like that. You can see there the circle. And then when you uh, click it, it can uh, give you a prompt that you are correct or not. Okay. Or whatever it is. It's like a uh, good job, something like that. You can uh, modify and you can customize your own, uh, what they call this, message box. And then we have this one, the combo box. Use when the user needs to select a value from a set of many values. So combo box and list box are kind of the same, something like that. So it's like there, you have a lot of values and uh, you want to select something. Okay, it's almost the same. It gives a different selection in the list in the list box. It gives different selections that can be scrolled up and down. Okay, and then we have the toggle box. Yes, here is the toggle box. Allows the user to change a setting between two states. So uh, the last one we have more control. So uh, this is what it looks like. So if you want to. Uh, do some controls or add more controls, you can use these more controls. Okay, but basically those are the icons and functions of the developer tab. Okay, and now the next group are the codes. Okay, this is the crucial part because the codes, it allows you to view, edit, and type your codes. So you will see there the visual basic. This is uh, what it looks like. And the macros. Okay, and then the macro security. Because if you are not going to secure your macro or your codes, everything will be debugged. Everything will gone. Or the worst case scenario, if you had, uh, if you do not save it, if you, not, if you uh, did not secure your uh, macros or your codes or a visual basic application, when you run it and then when you post it, oh no, it will not uh, will not work. Okay, so. Uh, might as well as much as possible. Do not forget to control S. Okay. To save, to save, to save, and to save. Okay. Do not forget that features. Okay. And then the last, uh, the second to the last is the add ins. Okay. So uh, as uh, we can read this, add ins, it just only for you to add up. Okay. The install programs, those enhanced speed and feature of the works are called add ins. So this is what it looks like. But most likely, uh, we are not going to uh, deal with this part, only those uh, with the icons and the functions in the control button. And then modify. This is what the modify button or icon looks like. So on this part, this is the Depp and Manila suggested flow when you are going to make use of the ISIM or the interactive strategic instructional material or intervention material. So the ISIM is a doc dual purpose or it's a double purpose like you can use it as instructional material while you are doing the lesson and you can use it also as an intervention material see it's a uh, hitting two birds with one stone right so in this part you can see here the main topic which is all about the musculoskeletal system and then on your left side you can see here the different flow okay or the flow of the lesson so it starts with the objectives starts with uh next with the drill the motivation unlocking difficulties lesson proper generalization application and evaluation it's like uh, your lesson plan is in your powerpoint presentation but this time it is interactive so in the objectives we know that we should put all the targets okay so do not forget uh to put all your targets at the beginning of your lesson and then the drill. So the drill and the motivation, I 
I think this is interconnected with each other so that when you do the drill, you can also motivate the students for them to, you know, become hyper, to become interested with the topic as much as possible, make use of a gamified one so that uh, they are, uh, you know, awake and alert and enthusiastic to learn. And then unlocking uh, difficulties or unfamiliar words uh, in English or in Filipino, uh, we can uh, use of the some vocabularies, okay, in science, like in some, uh, you know, like scientific names or scientific terms, or there are technical terms that we need to, uh, we need to study more or like we are going to encounter while we are discussing our topic. So we need to put it inside the unlocking difficulties or, or those the unfamiliar words. And then we have the lesson proper. Okay. You put all your uh, activities there. And then we have the generalization. Right after the generalization, you can see there the application. So also important. And then the last part, the evaluation. And then ta-da! You have your own PowerPoint presentation, your lesson plan in an animated way, okay? And then let's do the application time. Are you ready to apply all the things that you learned? Okay, so let's start with this. I will show you uh, some of the... This is uh, one of the ICIM that I made. Uh, last two years ago. Okay. Then I will teach you some of the basic codings and uh, some of the basic visual uh, basic application and how to combine one uh, animations or the action button in your PowerPoint. So let's start with the sample time. Okay. So uh, in here, I apply the animation. So this is like, you know, a gamified one. You know, when you go to the arcade, when you go to Quantum, or when you go to the World of Fun, one of the best things is that uh, you're going to look at the picture and then uh, try to search something. So this is a combination of uh, different animations. So I use like, uh, what do you call this? Uh, motion path, and at the same time, I also uh, use like the click, okay, the click action, the motion action, and then the appear or the entrance uh, animation. You will see there. So, uh, for example, this is uh, the title of this one is Region or, or Region. Look at the picture carefully and find the materials and foods that are with radiation. Double click the object so for example this one television so when i double click it that is motion path and as you can see at the bottom the tv has been erased okay that is the entrance okay the entrance animation so while you click it motion path will go into the radioactive material and then at the same time the tv or the television has been uh, crossed out okay by the entrance animation so here, cell phone, something like that, okay? And the x-ray, and then we have the civilian nuts, we have the oven, okay? We have the car rods, we have the radio, something like that. So those are the things that, you know, you, you just need to be creative and you just need to uh, just open up your mind for you to make an interesting game. So if you are, uh, uh, man or woman who loves to play games okay this one suits for you so as you can see there we find all the objects okay the materials and the foods and then all the materials at the bottom has been crossed out okay so that is just an animation okay uh, we are going to uh, relate or interconnect or combine one animation to another animation okay and then we have the next Next one is all about the action. So, yeah. <laughs> so, try again, again. Diba? So, we have here the back button. So, when you back button, you can. May kita niyo yan, madedebug, kapag hindi okay yung inyong visual basic application. Meaning to say, your visual basic application has been debugged. So, you cannot run. 
so that everything will not work. Okay. And for example, in this part, this is like an amazing place. It's like an amazing race. So, uh, race, as you race towards the finish line, collect all the radioactive things by clicking it. So, you are not uh, going to, uh, what do you call this? Put your cursor. So, this is your cursor, right? And this is your cursor. This, are, this is the start button. And then this is where you're going to start. And then your cursor is your, uh, like, your character. And then you are not allowed to bump to those white walls or to those white bricks because if you're going to uh, what do you call this if you're going to bump or if you're going to put your mouse over that uh, white walls you're going to try it again like uh, what we have done a while ago so that is an action button you're going to make an action for example you put there the rectangular shape so you put the rectangular shape and then you click the rectangular shape and then insert and then put some action. So for example, yan, mababangga tayo ha, ibabang natin. You lose. Okay? So you need to go back and then here. Okay. So you need to be careful. Try not to bump with those white walls or else you'll be dead okay this need so this is also uh, this is an animation uh, one so when you click it all the words are going to open okay, collect it and then be careful collect it and then go here you know yeah if you want like me something like that you can make use of it and uh, be creative enough. So there you go. And then this uh, this is link. Okay. When you click it, and then congratulations, you win. So that is an example of an action. This part. This is an example of Visual Basic application. Okay. So. Here, I put some checkbox. Okay, these are the checkbox here. You can see here. Checkbox, 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 checkbox. And these two are option. These are options. The options button. Okay, so spot hot, that's, that is the title. Then observe the picture carefully. Then put a check inside the box that shows he transferred. So I incorporated the visual basic applications here. So are you going to find he transfer here? For example, sun. When you click it, okay, there's a prompt that saying you are correct. Okay. And then just uh, okay it and then for example, stars. But there's no stars there, right? So the prompt says wrong. There are no stars in the picture. Okay, so that uh, the students, you know, they can, uh, as much as possible, they can interact with you. Oh, why there's no star like that? Because it's not yet night, for example, so that uh, they get the desired results in an instant. Okay, next we have the grill. Okay, so we are correct, something like that. And then the moon, wrong, there's no moon there, and that's the, the transfer. And correct, and then this one. Correct. Correct. So that is a checkbox that has the message box. Okay, checkbox with message box, visual basic application codes. Okay, and then we have next one. And this part in the visual basic application, uh, we're going to you know look at the GIF. Here. So, what this GIF means, something like that. So, energy is transferred, okay, from one molecule to another, it's known as. So, you need to click here and type your answer. So, this is a command box, okay? 
command box. So when you click it, there's a prompt that will notify you that note capitalized the all, oh sorry, capitalize all the letters, kabaligtad, capitalize all the letters in entering your answer. So uh, when you're going to uh, type your answer, be sure that you follow the instructions, okay? So for example, let's type hmm, conduction. Then let's click OK. Click OK. You are correct. There's a prompt there that says you are correct. And then, for example, this one, number two, let's click. And then let's type, for example, radiation. And then click OK. So sorry, you're wrong. Okay, sorry, wrong answer. So, same as with uh, if you uh, did not like type all the capital letter. Okay, sorry, you're wrong. Or sorry, wrong answer, something like that. You can uh, you can customize the message box in the prompt. So, uh, be creative as much as possible. Like, you nailed it, job well done. Okay, uh, like, very good, something like that. And then the last Visual Basic application is this one. It's also a checkbox. Okay. So here you can put some uh, simulations in your iSIM. So uh, this is run by Macro, or you can uh, get some uh, other simulations from uh, uh, other learning materials. But you need to, uh, you know, choose what's the best one. This is from WordWorks. So uh, you can put some of the macros of WordWorks here. So as you can see there, the simulations is uh, now uh, moving. And there's an explanation there based on the simulations that you see there. You can now answer this part. So this is the checkbox. There you go. So you got it right. Something like that. So wonderful. Like what I've told you a while ago, you can customize the message from box. So if you're wrong, try again. Okay. You can uncheck it. Read again. Okay. And then this is the text box. So in the text box, for example, they got it all correct, like you can put five there. Okay, so student notes, this is another, uh, what do you call this? This is text box also. So you can put it there any notes or the things that are very important to the students, like into relation. Okay, so that they will have their own notes, like uh, from direction, something like that, and then uh, conduction, so that. Uh, you can see there that the that there are the there are developments or improvements based on the learnings of the students so that uh, they can learn easily when it comes to this part. Okay, so uh, that's the end of the sample. So uh, I will teach you how to uh, put some of it. Okay, so let's start with the new slate. So this is just for an ICM template or sample. In your toolbar, you can see there, in between of the view and the help, you choose the or you click the developer tab. So in the developer tab, remember this one, okay? Remember the add-ins, the modify, okay, the codes, and the controls. So here in the controls, this is very important. Okay, these are the things that we need to learn for us to be able to run and make our PowerPoint an interactive one. And view codes. So this is where you're going to view the codes that you're going to put in. Okay, so for example one let's put 
a checkbox. The checkbox. We have checkbox one and checkbox two. So for example, we have a question like, uh, one plus one equal two. So uh, you're going to uh, answer by checking box like true or false. So here, for you to be able to edit the checkbox part here, go to the properties. This is the property. There you go. Okay. So click the property there, and then there's a elongate, an elongated window here, on your left side or whatsoever in any part of your computer. So you can rename it. Okay. So here you can see there the caption. This is the caption. So this is the name of your control, checkbox one, and then this is the caption where you're going to edit you cannot uh, edit it directly here okay remember that you cannot edit it here directly you need to go to the properties and then edit it there okay so here we're going to put like two so oh, sorry and then you can uh, change the font color and then here uh, you can also change the font style so again it's different from the it's different from the visual one so example we choose this one and then here you can choose what type of style and uh, what the uh, font size let's uh, choose 24 So let's go back here. There you go. Changes. It's very light, so let's change this into darker one. There you go. And then that's it. You change the checkbox button to uh, true. And then this one. Okay. We're going to edit this one as false. Then choose font style okay and then 24 there you go okay and then let's go back around here then let's change the color something like that okay there you go so you can close it if you're done so how will uh, how are we going to put some codes here or the message box so that we will know if uh, the answer for this question is correct okay so okay so in this part we are going to apply i will teach you how to uh, do some visual basic application in your isim so let's start with the new slate okay this is for your isim template okay so for example let's have the question one plus one equals two so we can put their checkbox here so let's go here and then there you go it's like you are inserting an image or inserting shape something like that but this time it's different it has a checkbox it has a control button okay and then just copy it and then paste although uh, checkbox one is uh, here but this is not checkbox one this is checkbox two later on you will see it here in the properties so you're not going to edit it here in the powerpoint presentation window and do not double click the button okay so if you want to edit it go to the properties here read the properties and then there's an elongated window will pop up on your right side or whatever side in your computer and then you can see here the checkbox one 
the name of the control button and then this is where you're going Start kind of with typing yeah. true or false. Okay, so uh, this time we are going to type the true or false button here and we're going to insert the codes for us to be able to know if our answer in this question is correct or not. So here we have checkbox one and this one is checkbox number two, but only the caption says checkbox one. So for us to edit here, do not double click it, okay? Because if you double click it, it will bring you to the Visual Basic application window. So for us to be able to edit it here in the properties, you can see the different alphabetic like and category that uh, we can, we will be able to edit our uh, Visual Basic. Okay, so here in the properties, we can edit the font style, the font size and even the color. So let's start with the caption here. Okay, this is a caption. It says there checkbox one. That is why checkbox one is written here. Okay, so highlight it and then let's type true. Okay, let's change the font style and the font size. So let's go with this one. Okay, then click okay and go back. Then we can also change the color. Change the font color. Let's choose blue. Okay, so now let's go to the another checkbox. So this is the checkbox two, but the caption only says checkbox one. Here is the caption, checkbox one, but the name of the checkbox is checkbox two. So uh, don't be confused with it, okay? So it's different from one to another because it is very important for you to know which what which is one and which is two which is three, which is four, so on and so forth, so that uh, you will not be confused when you are going to enter codes. Because if you like uh, put uh, some uh, wrong numbering when it comes to coding, everything will become uh, uh, wasted and uh, it will be debugged. So let's change the caption. So if you want to change the name here or the title here of the button, just go to the caption, look, at for, look for the caption in the properties. Okay, and let's type false. Change the font color and the font style. Okay. There you go, and let's choose red for false. Okay, there you go, and then let's go back here. So for us to be able to uh, input the codes in our uh, question or the true or false question here, double click first the true. Okay. So that is checkbox number one. As you can see here in the private sub, checkbox underscore click. So meaning to say, if you click the checkbox one, okay, this will be the message or the prompt. Okay. So let's type message box. Then special character, then your... Uh, message. Uh, let's uh, say you are correct. Then uh, another special character and then do not forget it's always end sub. Okay. That is for checkbox number one. And let's go to checkbox number two, which the caption is false. Double click it and then it will bring you to the window of Visual Basic for application. So message box. Message box and then special character again. Then uh, sorry, try again. Okay. Then let's go back here and then let's try. It, okay. So if you're going to try it, just present it. Be like this. Okay. So question number one: one plus one is equal to two. So if your answer is true, then check here. Then the message box, there's a prompt that uh, will send you a message that you are correct. But if you choose and check the box, 
or false. Sorry, try again. Okay, so that's it for the checkbox and inserting uh, the codes for message box. Okay, next, let's do the command button. So all you have to do is to uh, become creative when it comes to this kind of stuff, especially in, uh, you know, make a little bit of combination, uh, creativity, and at the same time, uh, become open-minded when it comes to what will be my students' like uh, interests, something like that. So let's go to the question number two. So for question number two, the basic unit of life. Okay, so the basic unit of life. Then let's put this one. This is the command command button. So for you to know the different names of the button, just let your mouse over it. So image. Okay, then this is the command button. Okay, or the active X control. Click it. And then it's like you are going to insert an image or a shape. So there you go. Almost the same, right? That this one is a command button. And then we're going to edit this button using the properties. Okay, click the properties again. Then you will see the name command button number one. Because you can put a lot of different command buttons. If you want to check something, I will teach you uh, to do that uh, also. So here... Let's check or edit rather the caption. So let's try click and type your answer. Okay, there you go. Then change it. Go back here. So when you click this command button, what you're going to do next is that you're going to code it so that when you put the codes inside of it, you will be able to answer the question. Okay. So for you to insert the code, double click again the button. Then it will bring you again to the Visual Basic for application. So I have here some samples of codes here. Okay. This one. This type of code is kind of logical. It's like when you, uh, what do you call this? When you answer it correctly, then it says like you are correct. But if you answer it incorrect, it's like, sorry, you're wrong, something like that. So it will give you like a logical uh, code, something like that. So here, the private sub, is with the command button number one. So we are not in command button number two, number three, but we are in a command button number one. So deem i as a string, meaning to say you're going to input an integer. Okay? So mag -i input tayo dyan ng uh, words. We're going to input words over there. So i means input box note capitalize all the letters in entering your answer. So meaning to say there's another prompt there that will uh, notify you that you need to capitalize all the letters of your answer. Okay, so if I, this is where the logical magic is happening. If, okay, if I is equal to then special character, then type the correct answer. Okay, cell then uh, the special character, then message box, you are correct. Meaning to say, that's the correct answer. Else, okay, another logical word. Message box, special character, sorry, wrong answer. So if, uh, if your student answer like tissues, organ, something like that, which is not cell or it is not all capitalized, the message box will prompt, sorry, wrong answer. And do not forget to end if. Okay. And the logical question, if. And if, then end sum. Okay. So let's try. So let's go back to the PowerPoint window. Here. Let's press F5. So the basic unit of life, click and type your answer. 
So there's the prompt there. So we insert there the integer, capitalize all the letters in entering your answer that will notify you. And then at the bottom of it, you can type your answer. So type cell. And then when you type cell, click OK. And then you are correct. But what if, if you're incorrect? Let's type tissue. When you click OK, sorry, wrong answer. Same as with if you do not follow the direction here. For example, you are correct. You answer your cell, but you didn't capitalize all the letters. So sorry, wrong answer. So it will uh, give you the exact answer based on how you direct your students, or please be careful with your directions. Okay, so next, I will teach you how to check their answer. Okay, how to check their answer. Let's start with command button. There you go. Command button, just copy it and then paste. So we have command button one here. This is the command button one. And you put another command button. This is command button number two, command button number three. So uh, it's continuous when you put the different buttons in one slide. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. Okay, and then let's try to edit the caption here. Okay. Let's type here, check. Then another one, let's type here, check also. And then this is a combination of uh, different controls in the developer tab. And then let's put some label, uh, no, not label, but the text box. This is the text box. There you go. And then this one also. You can change the color of the box, okay? So go to the back color, this part, okay? Back color, this is the back color. So you can change it, for example, you can as yellow, okay? Better yellow. And just copy and then paste it. Okay, so this is where, for example, there is a question and then you're going to check if their uh, answer is correct or not. Let's adjust it here, adjust it here, and then here also. Then let's type some questions. And question number three. Okay, let's have a group of cells and then have question number four. Group of, group of okay, so uh, for question number three, group of cells. For question number four, group of tissues. So uh, for us to be able to know how are we going to put some codes here, I will show you first what a text bag looks like when we present it. So this is what it looks like. You can type here, there. And then based on what you're typing here, then let's we will check it here. Then let's find out if your answer is correct or not. There you go. You can type it there. Okay, so do not forget this is text box number one, as you can see it here. Okay. This one is text box text box number two. Okay, do not uh, be confused. This is command button number two, okay? And this command button is command button number three. 
There you go. Okay, so let us check and put some uh, answer here. Okay, so for us to put it here, since the command button will command us which will be the correct one, so we will not click the text box, okay? But we will click the command button, okay? And this is where we're going to insert the code. So, so we have here the command button number two, and then let's input the code here. So again, integer. For text box number one, meaning to say, when you input, okay, in text box number one, if I is, again, group of cells, so to choose. Okay, if you choose then message box, you are correct. Else, message box, sorry, wrong answer or incorrect. Input there, incorrect. Then end if the logical question or the logical word, and then end sub. So let's try. Okay, so let's type here issue. And then when we click check, okay, sorry, incorrect. So let's go back. Meaning to say there's something wrong with the coding. Excuse me, sir. May nalamigay na naman ng sap. Papaalis lang, sir, ng motor. Tuloy lang, sir. Okay, so in this part, we are going to check What is wrong? If I is tissues, so our answer is incorrect, right? Because the answer here should be tissues. So we lack letter S. So let's go back here and then let's type it and then let's check. Click the command button to check and then you are correct. Okay. So uh, even if you lack uh, one letter, wrong spelling, sorry, it will uh, give you incorrect. So here, another one for a group of issues, we have organs. So again, double click to insert the code for the command button. Okay. So same as with this one, button number three. Okay, since deem i as string, i is not is equal to text box number one because we are talking about text box number two. So be mindful with the text box number. Be mindful with the command button number because your codes will not work if the numbering is not congruent or if it's not correct. Okay, so if text box two, if i is organs then message box you are correct or you can uh, say you nailed it another way of saying it, you are correct you nailed it else message box sorry better luck next time maybe we can uh, you know we can maximize the words that we're going to use or phrase that we're going to use when it comes to correct and incorrect correct or wrong answer, something like that, but they're like next time. Okay. Or we can uh, do it in a positive way. You can do it, something like that, okay? You can do it, try again. And then end if and then end some. And then let's go back 
to the PowerPoint window for us to test our code. Okay, so here let's type organs and then let's check. Then you nailed it, meaning to say you are correct. So, are we able to uh, edit the text box? Okay, is it editable? Oh, yes, it is editable. Okay, for you to edit this one again. Click it only once and then go to the properties here. Go to the properties. And then you will see there, okay, here, where is the caption? And then this is the text, okay, at the bottom. Most likely at the, almost at the bottom, here, okay? Then erase it. You can change the font style also, the font color, and you can, you know, change the alignment. You can uh, uh, put the words in the middle. So this is what you're going to do. Let's change the font style first. Okay. And then 24. And then let's go back here. And then change the color. Let's go for blue, dark blue. And then you will see here text align here at the bottom uh, below text. See there text align. And then just click here, this one, the right side, and then click the arrow down. Then from text align at the middle, Number two, okay. On your right, that's number three. On your left, that's number one. So click number two so that uh, your text when you type it is at the middle. Okay, and then let's check. Uh, see, so right in the middle. Sign teachers. There you go. You edited it already. Okay, again, for this one, go to properties and then. Uh, change the font style you can whatever font style you wanted to uh, have in your powerpoint presentation or in your isim as much as possible it's readable and uh, can be easy to understand easy to understand so that's okay and let's go back here and then let's change the color again if you want to become uh, more communicative when it comes to colors then go ahead and then Text alignment, choose number two. Okay, there you go. So, you edited it already. So, another one, another thing that I wanted to teach you about visual basic application is the drag and drop button. Okay, so in the drag and drop button, you are able or you are going to enable the to drag and drop the, what do you call this, the word or the answer. Okay, simple as this one. Go to the label. Oh, sorry, in text box. This is the text box. Go to the text box and then click it and then insert. There you go. Change the color. Okay. Then another one, make another one. So in this part, we are going to enable the drag and drop. So we are going to drag and drop the tissues and organs. Th those two words, we're going to drag and drop it to the uh, next or to the next, what do you call this, blank text box. Okay? So let's start. Since this is the text box that we are going to edit the drag and drop, let's uh, click this one. Okay, so go to the properties again. So this is text box number one. You will see there the... Where are you? This one, drug behavior. Here is a drug behavior. 
Okay, we, we are going to enable it since not. It's in zero state, meaning to say it's uh, not enabled. Okay, then there you go. Click number one so that you are able to enable. Uh, you enable it already. Okay. Go to this one again. Then uh, find the drug behavior. And then from zero state to one. Okay, meaning to say you already enable the drug and drug. So when we send this one, just double click it and then left click and then drug it to the next, uh, what do you call this, text box and then drop. There you go. And then this one, highlight everything and then left click and then drag it to the next empty text box. There you go. So are we going to uh, put this back here? No, because these two boxes here or text boxes here and the drug behavior is not enabled. Okay, so we are not going to drag and drop this one. Only this text box. So uh, you need to uh, combine all those coding, something like that, and uh, you need to, uh, as much as possible, creative enough for you to make your ISIM or your interactive strategic instructional material uh, like communicative, interactive, so that your students will become motivated enough and as much as possible, uh, they are eager to learn when it comes to technology. So uh, now I am challenging you to make your own ISIM and uh, please send it to the following link and to be sent to Sir JC to edit your control button.